hello and welcome to our youtube channel in this video we bring to you how to build a green roof on a shipping container house stay tuned as we show you how to go about it step by step good welcome back the walls and roof of shipping containers are designed to be watertight and therefore it's possible to live in a shipping container house without any additional roof. The biggest advantage of adding a planted roof or a roof garden onto a container house is to enhance its charm and beauty. Rooftop vegetation also improves urban ecology by retaining storm water, which helps to reduce peak flow and total runoff volume. It also reduces energy usage by keeping your home warmer in snowy weather and cooler in summer. Compared to steel roofing, planted roofs are good to muffle noise. When properly constructed, vegetative roofs can help create a microclimate hence reducing the urban heat island effect around the home. Once you have all your permits and licenses from your local council in place, you can embark on construction of your green roof in the following two broad categories. The first category is structural design. This is the most critical aspect of putting a green roof on a shipping container house. The roof and the walls of the shipping container are the weakest structurally and they are not designed to be load bearing. Shipping containers are designed to hold their weight on the base and the four corners of the structure. The roof therefore of an unmodified shipping container is not capable of withstanding the weight of a planted roof. To ensure that the container roof is strong enough and safe to live in as a house, additional modification and reinforcement must be introduced, otherwise the container roof will buckle and cave in. Input from a structural engineer at this point is very important. There are two ways to install a green roof on a shipping container house. Since the container roof is watertight, the next step would be to waterproof the roof and plant the vegetation with a protective skirting all round. Alternatively, you can have a garden planter sitting in a steel frame above the roof of the container, keeping the planted roof weight of the non-structural roof of the shipping container. And having enumerated those two scenarios, in this video we will be installing a green roof directly on top of a 20-foot shipping container cabin. For structural enforcement, first introduce steel cross beams under the ceiling and weld them onto the top side rails at every four corrugations to accommodate the additional weight load from the dirt on the roof. Once the structural enforcements are complete, clean the roof and sandblast all areas with rust. Prime the container roof and apply a marine grade epoxy, then apply an anti-corrosive metal paint to protect the container roof against rust in case of any leakage or rainwater pooling on the roof. The last bit of the structure modification is to build a roof frame. Since the container roof is generally flat, the roof will require an incline to ensure that water runs off naturally and doesn't pull on the roof. To remedy this, an additional plywood roof on wooden beams resting on the four corners of the structure should be added. This extra roof should be set at a slight angle so that water that slowly filters through can be collected via a gutter on the rear side of the cabin. Remember all the timber used must be treated and waterproofed. With all these 
in place, the final bit of structure modification is to build the frame itself. A frame should be built around the perimeter of the roof out of rot resistant materials. The frame needs to be the same depth as the substrate, normally a minimum of 100 millimeters. This will ensure the green roof materials remain contained within the structure. Ensure that the frame does not block water from draining off the roof. Materials such as a mesh gutter guards, wood or other edging materials with provision of sufficient guttering can be used. With this first part already complete, we move to the second and final stage of green roof construction. This second stage is the planting bit. First, you put a waterproof membrane. Choose a waterproof layer to go over the false plywood roof that was added. This must be laid first before anything else. Leave a 5 inch lip around the edge of the entire area of the roof edge and under the roof drain. Any excess liner will be trimmed off once the roof is complete. Secondly, install a root barrier. Place a 6 mm sheet of plastic on the waterproof membrane to serve as a root barrier to the green roof. The root barrier is the system that avoids the membrane underneath from being pierced and penetrated by the roots and it ensures that the system can remain in top shape for a long time. Thirdly is insulation. Insulation can be optional. It is only required if it is necessary to increase the R value of your roof over a conditioned space underneath or if the space below the green roof is not conditioned. Fourthly, install a drainage layer. Set a drainage mat with capillary spaces on top of the insulation. To keep the soil from clogging the mat, increase, come again. Set a drainage mat with capillary spaces on top of the insulation. This is to keep the soil from clogging the mat or increase the weight of the roof. Place a mat so that the felt side is facing upwards. The drainage layer material is made to be sturdy and strong so that piercing can be limited and that the integrity of the entire roof can be retained without much ado. Fifthly, install a filter fabric. Laid on top of the drainage layer is a filter fabric made of geotextile materials such as fleece or other woven materials. This layer holds the soil in place and separates the drainage layer from the growing medium. This prevents the growing medium from blocking the drainage layer or the stormwater system. Number six, install a growing medium. Always use a lightweight growing medium. Topsoils from the garden are not suitable for green roofs because they are usually too heavy and they tend to become too compacted. Use a mixture of organic and inorganic materials. Remember to focus on keeping the elements lightweight but water retaining. A gravel margin of 300 millimeters wide should be placed around the edge of the roof and anything penetrating the roof surface. The gravel margin will also ensure unwanted vegetation does not establish closer to the edge of the roof. Last but not least, we do the planting. This is the most exciting part of the green roof. You can tailor your plants to attract specific species of plants and wildlife or reflect the local seed bank. Choose drought tolerant plants suited for your local area. The hardier the plant, the less the irrigation needed on top of your roof. 
Select plants that can tolerate extreme temperatures and weather fluctuations experienced in a typical rooftop microclimate. With all plants up the roof, remember to water them. So, did you find our presentation informative enough to enable you grow your own green roof on a shipping container house? Let us know by posting in the comments below. If you like our design and would like to carry out a DIY project of your own green roof, you can purchase the detailed drawings of this particular house design with the green roof from our website sheltermode.com. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for our updates on amazing design ideas using shipping containers. Thank you for your time and see you in the next video.